Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the 2018 Sinai Innovations. Our theme this year is Innovation in Science and Medicine, and that's intended to reflect the illustrious history of this great medical school, which, uh, whose 50th anniversary we're celebrating this year. And there have been many events. This is one of them. Uh, the conference is organized around four major themes that really reflect four among the many uh, important areas of contributions by our faculty over the history of the school. Um, this is part of a broader effort led by Dean Charney to uh, cultivate a culture of innovation, entrepreneurship, and discovery that will advance the lives of our patients. If I could, okay. Um, one of the other ways that we recognize innovation and achievement is through uh, awards, and I just want to take a minute before I introduce Dean Charney to review some of our award winners that were recognized last night in a ceremony at the uh, Davis Conference Center. Um, this was sponsored by Jones Day, who've been a stalwart supporter of our Innovation Award ceremony. Uh, we had multiple hosts as well. Um, starting with uh, the most prominent uh, recognition, the Inventor of the Year Award was given to Ann Schaefer for her pioneering work in microRNAs and epilepsy that uh, could lead to breakthrough therapies for this difficult condition. Uh, this is the discussion, or the uh, points about her work. The Dealer of the Year was uh, given to Julio Aguirre Guiso, who is a highly creative uh, entrepreneur who's identified important mechanisms by which cancer cells uh, either remain dormant or are activated. And this led to a spin-out company that was recognized in the New York City area as one of the best and largest biotechnology deals uh, in the New York area. There were a number of awards given to the 4D Technology Development Program Award. I won't read all of them, but this is a um, program that recognizes team entrepreneurship and creativity. It's supported by our CTSA award uh, and uh, included a gamut of activities that were anything from pharmaceutical chemistry to uh, clinical applications and, again, recognizing early achievement and entrepreneurship. In addition, the Faculty Idea Prize was presented by Dr. Lakshmi Devi to recognize nascent teams that come together to form or to germinate new ideas uh, that ultimately may have clinical or translational potential, and that was Drew Karai and J Jacob Young. Uh, in addition, we recognize team science. This was indeed a theme of one of our Sinai Innovation programs several years ago. Uh, this was presented by Janice Gabriloff and uh, the competition was extremely fierce, uh, but ultimately the recognition was given to a team from cardiology led by Jason uh, Kovacic uh, to define uh, fibromuscular dysplasia, a relatively rare disease, uh, and they are making major inroads through their team efforts. Um, in addition, a trainee innovation award, idea award, was distributed to four different groups. So you see the winners listed here. This, like the faculty idea award, recognizes innovative ideas, not necessarily those that have been reduced to practice yet, um, but also trying to cultivate uh, this uh, spirit within our trainees to really think outside the box, uh, to work together, to come up with novel ideas that may have translational and clinical potential. And then finally, the awards recognized uh, the culmination of a full weekend of activities presented by Kevin Costa through our uh, health hackathon. Uh, the theme this year was rare diseases, which is one of the main uh, historical strengths of Mount Sinai. And without going into detail, there were three highly creative teams that came up with prototype or actual working um, prototypes of their different discoveries. One was called Walkthrough. Uh, the second was I Can Do, which was a, an app-based uh, instructional platform for paralyzed or immobile patients to control different facilities uh, with only looking at the app on their iPhone or on their smartphone. And th then finally, Mango Tango, which uh, was a, uh, a digital app uh, to acquire and integrate information around diet, exercise, and activity. Uh, so. Uh, this really represents a larger spirit of innovation that has been seeded by Dean Charney. Um, here are our Mount Sinai Innovation Award uh, hackathon, Health Hackathon winners. Um, a really a tremendous range of, of uh, both geography and also talent, everything from college students, high school students, right up to uh, clinical faculty here. And uh, it was really a fruitful and very productive weekend. And finally, it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Dean Dennis Charney. Uh, you'll hear more from him as part of the panel in the afternoon, but it's really been his vision that has uh, sparked this uh, innovative culture that has now uh, grown over the last seven or eight years. 
uh, and he in turn will uh, review some of the history of our institution. Dean Charney. First, let's give applause for all those award winners. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> I'd like to thank Scott uh, Friedman and uh, Rama Iyengar and the entire you know, team that has put together, uh, again, a great you know, conference that uh, will unfold over the next uh, two days. It represents a lot of what we're all about as uh, you know, being an innovative, uh, entrepreneurial uh, culture. Uh, I don't know if uh, Eric Liam's in the audience or his, anybody from his team, uh, but Eric and his team lead Sinai, uh, Mount Sinai Innovation Partners, you know, which uh, takes Mount Sinai science and, and works with our inventors, our scientists, uh, to commercialize uh, the science, to work with uh, other partners, and e even to uh, spin out Mount Sinai-based uh, companies. Uh, the, one of the best examples is uh, Semaphore, which we spun out of our Department of Genetics and our Icon uh, uh, Institute, which is now a 500-person uh, uh, sequencing and uh, in a, uh, information uh, company uh, that is, is growing and I think will have a big impact uh, on the field of predictive analytics. Uh, we recently formed another company that uh, will be on uh, public trading called Renalytics which is based on Mount Sinai science to come up with better ways of, of diagnosing and predicting the outcome of kidney disease. And we've got a lot of other things in the, in the pipeline in terms of uh, new medicines, uh, new uh, imaging uh, uh, innovation, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So you know, it's, kind of, it's working, with the kinds of investments that we have made uh, in Mount Sinai science to do what's most important to us uh, which is to make discovery that, that uh, changed the lives of our uh, uh, patients. Uh, we have uh, developed a strategic plan for the school and the health system that is now being implemented. Uh, it is the, the basis of our capital campaign, which has begun. Capital campaign means raising money, and, and we're, we're good at that, and it's going to lead to further investments in Mount Sinai uh, science in terms of the recruitment of faculty and also in building our infrastructure. Uh, we've made a commitment uh, starting in 2019 in which we are going to completely renovate uh, one of our buildings, uh, 3 East 101st Street, which is between Madison and uh, you know Fifth Avenue. Uh, we're gonna renovate about 50,000 uh, squ square feet in that building. Uh, to gr create uh, new, and I don't like to use the word dry lab anymore, we need to come up with a better uh, term, but we're gonna renovate all that space uh, for Mount Sinai scientists and new recruits. Think uh, MIT Innovation Lab, uh, think Arizona Biodesign Institute, uh, think Google, uh, Google and Apple, and that'll give you kind of a, the concept of what we're gonna do uh, with that building uh, starting in 2019. So there's a lot going on. Um, that, a lot of that was reflected in the, uh, the awards and competition that occurred over the last uh, couple days and uh, what you're gonna hear at this conference. As Scott has mentioned, our school is now 50 years old. This, uh, we've been celebrating that over the, uh, this year. We're gonna continue that celebration. And we have a little bit of a uh, uh, a, a film that we want to show you that talks a bit about the history of Mount Sinai and, uh, you know, where we're going. school at Mount Sinai Hospital. And more than a new medical school, it will be a new kind of medical school designed to turn out a new kind of doctor. Tomorrow's doctor will have to be trained not merely in new techniques, but by completely new teaching concepts. And he will have to balance his vastly expanded medical knowledge and skills with a deeper, fuller social understanding of his patient. 
will take a new kind of medical school to turn out doctors like this, the Mount Sinai School of Medicine. I had a friend from college a year ahead of me who had gone to this new medical school. And he said to me, you know, it's really small, it's really intimate, and that appealed to me. I worked in Sherwin-Wilkes lab working on the biology of neuropsychiatric conditions. And it changed my whole attitude toward medical school and set the foundation for what became my career. We knew we were in a hospital where there were the people who wrote the books, got Nobel Prizes. You could hardly sit in your seat. When I was a student here and a fellow here, I was taught by some of the very best. And I feel very lucky to be in a position where now I have to hold that standard up for my students and my residents. And so being at Mount Sinai, to me, represents an opportunity to teach the next generation of students to be better than I ever have. Being a student at Mount Sinai in those days was very special. It was a young school. We felt that we had a world of possibility. We really felt that we were getting a top flight clinical education. And I was as well or better equipped to do frontline clinical medicine than any of my peers. That I owed to Mount Sinai. What we are trying to do is to build into the curriculum some provisions for broadening the outlook of the physician. We would like him to be aware every minute of the social and personal relations of the patient that he's dealing with, of the family and other aspects of his life, which must be taken into account. The Icon School of Medicine stands for uh, a complete devotion of putting the patient first in all of our thoughts and creating science that is patient-centric. The school really offers a very rich and integrated culture that is all built around teamwork, shared success, shared sacrifice, and a commitment to improving the lives of our patients. There is going to be increased specialization. This specialization becomes possible only because of breakthrough in basic science in all kinds of areas. We've had a lot of breakthroughs over the 50 years of the life of the school. Our scientists have impacted all the major diseases, whether it's cancer, heart disease, neurological and psychiatric diseases, genetic diseases. What we're interested in, I think, is what is it that we can do in relation to the future of American medicine? We have scientists investigating viruses so that we can discover a universal flu vaccine. We have scientists studying neuropsychiatric diseases that have led to new ideas on how to treat Alzheimer's disease and depression. That tradition of being a hospital that gave birth to a medical school continues to drive us with our values and culture, which is to say, we're here to develop the foundation for the next generation of therapeutics. I hope the future of the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai will look like the past in its ability to break new ground, ask tough questions, and advance the care of patients. So I'm very thankful to the founders that enabled us to get to the point where we are so that we can celebrate a 50th anniversary. And it is our responsibility, you know, the current leadership, the current faculty, the current students, to build on that foundation. The future is incredible for us. We are going to make a difference that will write history for generations to come. So um, as, I, as I watch this again, a couple you know, thoughts uh, come to mind. One is when you, you hear about what the mission of the school was from the beginning, it does sound familiar in, in that we've kept you know, a lot of uh, that mission uh, moving forward. But we've also 
you know, done a lot more. And uh, you know, one is if you look at the founders, uh, I do think they're all white men. And, uh, and they're, they're not that young either. And we're a very different place uh, than that right now in terms of our commitment uh, to uh, uh, gender equity and diversity and, um, and, and fostering the careers of, of young people and you know, fostering ideas that are out of the box and innovation. Uh, and you're gonna hear a lot about that over the next uh, t two days. But we're still very committed uh, to the mission of doing great science, basic, translational, and clinical science that change the lives of our patients here at Mount Sinai and around the world. So thank you very much, and I'm gonna give the podium back to Scott Friedman.